How's it going, everybody? My name is Benjamin Anderson, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing our series on sync times by talking about how our data is affecting our sync time in AppSheet. Now, there are three things about our data that are affecting our sync time. The number of rows in each table, the number of tables themselves, and the source we're bringing our data from. That's Google Sheets, Excel, SQL, those are our data sources. Now, number of rows makes a lot of sense because the amount of data we're trying to bring into our app is going to affect how quickly we can sync all that data in. That makes a lot of sense. Number of tables affects our sync times because the app sheet can only bring in a certain number of tables at a time. Now, if you don't have a lot of tables or if you're on a very high plan, your slowest table is what's going to be affecting your sync time the most. Um, the number of tables in those situations isn't going to be affecting it as much. And finally, data source matters because not all data sources can sync data as efficiently as each other. And I'll be going over each of these a little bit more, starting with number of rows. Now you might think, I just have a lot of data. How can I make that more efficient? And there's actually a few ways you can do that. Starting off with security filters. Security filters are going to help you filter out data your users don't need to see and thus bringing in less data overall. If you have user permissions or um, want to make sure only certain companies see certain data or even if you only want users to see their own data and not anybody else's, security filters are going to help you reduce the amount of data you have to bring in. Now, you might be thinking, I'm already using slices to do a lot of these things. Do I still need security filters? And that's a kind of complicated question. Slices aren't actually approving the efficiency of bringing data in because slices filter data that's already in your app. Security filters are going to filter data before it gets to your app. Now, that makes your data more secure because there's not a possibility of other people getting that data because it's not in the app at all. And it's going to improve efficiency because you're bringing in less data overall. Now, the difference is security filters do require a higher plan on AppSheet than slices do. So if you're not on that plan, security filters aren't necessarily going to be an option for you. One thing that could be an option for you is archiving your data. Now, this is going to help on a few levels. One, you probably don't need to edit older data, and you probably don't even need to see it most of the time. So there's a few options for archiving data. You can use, go back up to security filters and filter out data beyond a certain point. But if you are using something like a Google Spreadsheet, you might have a maximum cell count. If that's the case, archiving data is going to be a great option for you. To archive data, you're going to need to take the data you're wanting to archive, if that's data, usually that's data that's older than a certain point, and you're going to want to move it to a new sheet. By doing this, you have made it so the number of rows in your data is smaller. It's just that simple. Now, you do have to do this manually outside of AppSheet, which can be a little tedious, but it can help in a few ways. Now, if you never need to see that data again, you are just bringing in less data, and that's great. If you still need to see that data, you still have a few options. You can bring it in as a read-only table, which I'll be going over in a second, or you can create a whole nother app. If you create a whole nother app that has your just your archived data, you can link to it from the app you're in so that you don't lose access to it and so that it's still easy to access. Um, but it only slows down your experience when you actually need to change or view the old data instead of your normal situation where you'll only usually be working on recent data. This is very useful and we find a lot of people can get a lot of use after moving this data to another app. Now I did reference read-only data and I kind of flop back and forth about whether to include this in number of rows or number of tables, but ultimately it's not really changing the number of tables you're bringing in. It's actually just improving the efficiency of bringing the data itself in. AppSheet has a lot of settings where you can change how it looks at read-only data. And when you do this, you approve the efficiency because it can do things like 
cache or store the data because it knows you aren't going to be changing it so it doesn't have to worry about checking if that data has been changed by another user because it's the same every time. If you make your data read only, it can bring that data in more efficiently because it doesn't have to worry about other people changing it. So those are the few things you can do to help <coughs> bring in the number of rows, or excuse me, to help bring in less data or improve efficiency of bringing the data in that you have. Next, we've got number of tables. Now, number of tables is a little bit harder. There aren't as many options, one of which is bring in fewer tables. If you can delete some of the tables by making them enum values, an enum data type with static options, then that is a great option. That's something I fall into a lot where I like to make the enum or the drop downs of certain tables reference other tables. If I can instead remove that table and make it a static drop down, I'm going to be able to improve my efficiency by bringing in fewer tables. If this isn't an option, the other option you have is to upgrade your plan. AppSheet only brings in a certain number of tables at a time based on what plan you're on. So the lower plan you're paying for, the fewer tables you can bring in at a time. This makes sense because AppSheet has to devote a lot of um, server space or processing power to bring in more than one table at a time. It's something called multi-threading or uh, multi-threaded programming and it is very process intensive so it does make sense that AppSheet charges more uh, to be able to do this. That being said, I don't normally recommend upgrading your plan just because you could bring in more tables. This isn't something that I think is really going to be a game changer for most people. If you're having a lot of trouble, I would recommend looking at the first situation where we're improving the efficiency of each table individually than the tables themselves. That being said, if you're already thinking about upgrading your plan and you're kind of on the fence, this could be something that you add to your pros column that could help tip it towards upgrading your plan. But those are your main options for the number of tables. Um, that being said, I will reference again, maybe some of your tables can be read-only tables. If that's the case, you can help some of your tables come in more efficiently. Finally, we've got our data source. Our data source is another one that's a little tricky. This isn't going to be an option for most people because they have their data where they have it and they want to keep it there. But if you're willing to change your data source, then the most efficient data source is going to be a SQL database. I put this one at the end because again, this is going to cost more money. If you aren't on a business plan or can't afford a business plan, then this really isn't an option for you. And again, I'm going to point you back towards improving the number of rows, improve bringing in your data, the number of rows section, instead of looking at the data source. Because ultimately, if something is inefficient, if you're bringing in data inefficiently from Google Sheets, uh, it's also going to be brought in inefficiently from SQL. SQL overall is just more efficient. And so it might help if you don't want to go through the process of making your tables themselves more efficient. SQL is a bit harder in and of itself. Usually people who are using SQL have traditional programming experience. And so this might be something you need to contract out and not something you could do yourself. And so that's just another thing you would have to weigh in the decision of whether or not to choose a SQL database. That being said, if you do have the option of using a SQL database, we highly recommend it. I love using SQL. It opens up a lot of doors for a lot of different things. Um, but if you can't completely understand, and that's why we led with the number of rows section of the sync efficiency. And that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. At Crew Technologies, we love helping people get great value out of AppSheet. We do that through offering professional services and helpful content like this. To stay up to date, like and subscribe, and we're always trying to improve, so leave us your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.